Hi guys, welcome back to Crossland Production. Um, I'm really excited about uh, my next guest. This is Howard Wiggins. Um, I actually met Howard uh, through Rachel, Rachel Roberts, and uh, um, and Natasha. It was both of them uh, have told me about Howard and said that uh, uh, you know they wanted me to talk to him and get him on the show and kind of hear his story. Um, they told me that uh, he's a very interesting guy, so. Uh, I'm excited about bringing him on and, and learning uh, a little bit more about him and his journey. So welcome to the show, Howard. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, um, yeah, so uh, like I was saying that, uh, you know, Rachel, you know, I reached out to Rachel and um, Rachel was like, yeah, I, uh, you know, the first thing she popped, you know, that, that, uh, that uh, came to mind when she was telling me about people she wanted to uh, you know, me to talk to to have on the show. You were the first person. <laughs> Rachel so, and I are kind of close, so. Right. So she's like, "Yeah, you got to get uh, you got to get my friend Howard on, and uh, you know, he's an interesting guy. He's got a you know an interesting story. So uh, I'm like, oh, you know, all right, <laughs> let's get him on. Uh, let's kind of get to know him. So, um, so we'll we'll just jump on into it. So, um. We'll start like kind of where you were uh, born and raised. And what, what was life like for Howard growing up? Well, I was uh, the son of Little Roy Wiggins, who played steel guitar on the Grand Ole Opry, who mm -hmm. actually started the Grand Ole Opry with Eddie Arnold and Minnie Pearl. My father was famous at age 13. He played with a, a guy named Paul Howard. Okay. And Paul Howard said, if you name your son after me, then I'll buy you the nursery. And that's what he did. Oh, wow. And then after he played with Paul Howard, he played with Pee Wee King. Pee Wee King, he was playing back up behind Patsy Cline and Cowboy Copas and doing the Louisiana Hayride. And uh, after that, he, he, Eddie Arnold hired him away from Pee Wee King, and he worked for Eddie Arnold for 25 years. And Eddie Arnold toured with uh, Minnie Pearl, and uh, they were doing the Louisiana Hayride. Well, Minnie Pearl's parents were wealthy. So they said, uh, why don't you, we'll get the Opry and do the show here in Nashville and people can come see you and you don't have to travel. And right. that's how the Opry got started. So wow. my dad was, um, and he continued to do that all his life. Uh, right. One of my other famous stories I love to tell is Dolly Parton and I. If you look on my Facebook page, you'll see a picture of me kissing Dolly Parton when I was 18 and she was in her 20s. But... Wow. Uh, the way that started was my dad had Grammar Guitar Company back then, and okay. Dolly had just started singing with Porter Wagner, and he took me to watch him make uh, publicity shots of holding the guitar, right. and so I met Dolly her very first day on the Porter Wagner show, and oh, then wow. I would see her every Saturday night at the Grand Ole Opry, and we'd talk behind stage, and, and I saw her all the time up until 9 to 5. I mean... Uh, she came to see me in the hospital. Uh, wow. see, I went out to dinner with her once. Uh, I went to see her perform in Sevierville. She took a busload of just friends of hers to watch her perform. Uh, I ran into her at Fair Park one time when uh, her uh, si siblings were out there playing. So I saw her all the time. And I remember stories that she told me, like she said, Howard, when my uh, music career is over, I'm going to write children's books. Well, oh, wow. her career's not over, but she did manage to get the book thing in there. Right. With her. So, well, and then, so and then uh, my, let, me, let me go back. So, uh, so, when okay. you, so um, growing up, growing up, how old were you when your dad kind of started uh, the uh, the great offer? He was thirteen when he was famous, so he was famous oh, wow. before I was born. Uh, wow. He, yeah, he started at age thirteen, and the way he started is an interesting story because he grew up during the Depression. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother took in a boarder, and that boarder taught my father how to play the steel guitar. Oh, wow. So, so I mean, sometimes out of, you know, necessity comes great things. So Right. So you yeah. kind of grew up in the whole thing. So he was already well-established. In, in, oh, yeah. 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 So you, you grew up in... in uh, so knowing, knowing, uh, you know, these big singers and, and, uh, I guess some of them are actors really that come through well, there. 
we grew up in Brentwood, Tennessee, which is where I'm currently living now, too. And we lived on a street that had uh, Skeeter Davis, Ralph, Ralph Emery, and then my uh, soon-to-be stepfather raised Brenda Lee, who wrote Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree Christmas oh, wow. Party. And everybody knows her because they play it all the time. Uh, right. and, and there was Stu Phillips and Jim Ed Brown and... Uh, there was another entertainer. I'm trying to think of what his name was, but it slips in my mind right now. And then a little funny story. Uh, when I was growing up, we had tour buses coming by our road, with, right. you know, showing tourists and they take pictures of the houses. Well, I would peek out the window and watch for that tour bus to come. And then I go get the mail so that I get my picture made every time. So, right. so I guess I had a little inclination that maybe I do like to be in the limelight. Right. So cool. What was that like? What was that like kind of growing up like that? You know, your dad. Uh, honest, your honestly, when I was growing up, country uh -huh. wasn't cool. I mean, my generation was more rock and roll. I was born in 1953. Right. So I never even told people that my father was on the Grand Ole Opry until I was an adult because uh -huh. because my generation liked rock and roll. Now my yeah. son and my grandson, they all like country. Uh -huh. So and they like the old country also. So it's kind of it's kind of weird because like in uh you know brentwood right now like tennessee is like a hot spot for country oh it always has been it always has yeah. been it's, it's and, that, and that is due to my father and my stepfather my stepfather owned the arnold company which mm -hmm. is a real estate company he also owned owned the water company so when i was born on granny white pike here in brentwood and then moved into air Corps subdivision it was right. woods. People thought it was like going far out. Now right. it's not. It's 10 minutes from town. And uh, and then it goes right to Franklin after that. So uh, it was because of my father selling real estate because he knew everybody at the Opry and started the Opry that all right. the Opry stars started moving to Brentwood. Okay, cool. So um, now, so you're you're growing up around that, you know, with all these people coming in. What What was that like? Because, I mean, a lot of kids don't see that kind of people come in and just come in and out. And, you know, I'm sure these guys came to your house because they knew your dad. Oh, they so. did. Uh, I got a story on that, too. Andy Griffin may not know it started on the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, and okay. Andy Griffin had dinner at our house before he left to make his movie No Time for Sergeants. And No Time wow. for Sergeants led into his movie career and TV career from their right. own. So, wow. uh but he actually started off on the Grand Ole Opry. And then I remember people that weren't on the Grand Ole Opry. We had Perry Como to our house, uh, Peggy Lee, uh, uh, just several stars that I liked that weren't necessarily affiliated with the Opry. Also Barbara Eden and the guy who played Cochise, her husband. They right. were friends with my father. Uh, just a, a lot of, the ones I saw on TV are the ones I liked. <laughs> you know? right. So, so it, it, you never, you never, you didn't tell your friends. I mean, like you were, like until you were an adult. You did you? Um, I, I guess as a kid, you didn't appreciate it. You know I mean, I guess as much. I, I, I was actually, you, believe it or not, I was very shy growing up. Okay. It took it took me a little while to get out of my shyness, and I only had one friend through elementary school and high school. Right. So, uh, and I didn't care about making clicks or anything like that. So. Yeah. Uh, I was happy myself. So, yeah, and, and, and the word appreciate isn't what I'm looking for. I'm just more, uh, you know, when you're growing up and you're so used to things, you know, what I mean, you, um, especially when you're younger um, and things like that's going on, you you know, since you're you're born into it, you're, you know, it's something that happens all the time. You don't really think about it until you get older, right? And you start realizing, hey, the, you know, these people are, are you know, uh, you know. I don't say well, no, but they're, but there's special people, you know, in dark society that's coming yeah. through here, and I and I'm I'm getting a chance to actually meet and you know hang out. Who who could say that you know at, at a young age they're hanging out with Dolly Parton? You know, what I, mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's true. Who could say yeah. it now? She's gotten so big and famous. So right, exactly. And yeah. you know, even you talk about you know Andy Griffith and um, um, Eden, uh, Barbara Eden. Barbara Eden, yeah, uh, from I Love Jeannie. 
um, you know, you talk about these, uh, you know, these uh, stars. Um, I guess as a kid, you don't really, uh, sometimes you don't understand it. Was were you older when it when they came through, or were you still younger? No, I was younger when I met them. I just mm -hmm. found out more about my father as I got older. One thing I found out, uh, I was used. I was walking down the mall at Christmas time, right. and I heard Christmas song. It's uh, Little Shanty Town by Eddie Arnold. And right. I recognized my father playing it. I didn't even know he had a Christmas song until maybe four years ago. And oh, wow. I heard it in the mall. And then certain little things that I found out after he was gone. I mean, uh, when he, I didn't really know he played with Patsy Cline until after he died. Uh, oh, wow. I didn't know who Paul Howard was that I was named after. I, I, uh, every now and then I'll do a Google search, Leroy Wiggins, and right. I'll find out things about my father that I never knew. So, oh, wow. Because He's my father. He wasn't a big star. I mean, to, in my eyes, I mean, he right. was my father. And uh, I had the opportunity. He had a music shop on music on Broadway in downtown Nashville. And mm -hmm. I worked there one summer. And it's really strange because when you see an entertainer perform, everybody around them is telling them how great they are, how much they love their music. And it has to go to your head because if right. they don't like you, they're not around you. So it, it was... Uh, I kind of understood his part of life when everybody around you is just telling you how great you are. You right. Know? So. Yeah. And, but you know, they're, not, and that's they're not seeing him. Yeah. They're not seeing him sitting around in his underwear watching TV though. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the cool, all the cool points go out the door after that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, um, yeah. So now when you started growing up, um, where did you kind of find your passion where you kind of fit in with uh, in this? Well, I was an interior designer most of my life up until I was 65. And then when I retired, uh, it just happened. I mean, I used to be on a local TV show here called Nashville Entertainment Weekly with right. TJ Cates. TJ Cates made his first uh, movie. It's called The Haunted Farmhouse. It hasn't been released here in the States. It's overseas right now. And now here they're going to do a sequel. But I, he called me and he said, I don't know anybody that looks as good in a top hat. Would you like to be the ghost in the movie? Right. And I said, sure. Well, I did that. And that mm -hmm. led to uh, a, a, like a little zombie movie that I did. And then I've got another one coming up in Hollywood. Who, who's going to take care of me? Which I'll play an emergency room doctor with a lot of big stars. That's going to be a major movie. Wow. And then the biggest thing that's happened lately is my... Uh, agent, which is out of Hollywood, Gloria Trait, she called me and said, there's a producer that wants you for a TV series. Right. And I found that out on Thursday. And then on Monday, she told me who it w was with. Right. I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but I'll give initials. It's WG and it's a woman. Right. And, and I'm sure it's probably going to be a comedy. I'm just guessing. But I'm waiting to hear back from that. So, Cool. So now you said that... Um... So your your first passion growing up was interior design, right? Oh, yeah, de definitely interior design. <laughs> I even have a story about that. My mm -hmm. uh, dad traveled the road all the time, and we only saw him basically sometimes on weekends. So uh, mother had gone and redecorated every single thing in the house. We had new drapes, new TV, new furniture, new lamps. Everything on the wall was new. He comes in from out of town, sits in a brand new recliner, goes on and turns on a brand new TV set and didn't say one word. And mother wow. said, don't you notice anything? He said, did you get your hair done today? <laughs> <laughs> That's good to get the hair done. And I'm like, wow. I, I don't know. I, th I think I was so excited. To, I wanted to see his reaction, his reaction. He didn't even pay attention. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so, so what, uh, you know, growing up around, you know, the music scene, what kind of led you to go into uh, interior design? I think it started probably one Christmas. When, back in the 60s, uh, I never wore jeans up until a, probably about 10 years ago. And I wore Levi's when I was young because that's what they were in the 60s. And they used to wear the colored socks with the colored right. shirts. And my mother one year gave me a great big, I think it was probably six or eight foot wide box. 250 pairs of colored socks. And I had 250 shirts to go with all those colored socks. Wow. And 
so I, uh, and I've maintained that all my life. I still probably have about 250 pairs of shirts. I mean, shirts. Right. And then when I left home, I never wore a jacket until I bought this Amati jacket that was leather, green distress, probably about 10 years ago. I right. thought about wearing that today. But uh, because our mother always said, wear a coat when you leave, you know, home. And I thought, I'm not going to wear a coat. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> you know? right. And I just never did wear a coat until I found a coat that I love. And once I found a coat I love, you ought to see my, my closet. I mean, I've got jackets for nearly every, every, every occasion you can dream of. So right. now that I've got the shirts, got the jackets, now I'm getting into jewelry too. So it's just, uh, just an ongoing thing. Because really a lot of principles when you dress, it's the same as you use when you do design. You mix right. elements, you create style, you're doing pattern. So a lot of the same things I do in design, I do when I dress. So, okay. Yeah. And so that kind of uh, then transitioned into uh, getting into getting involved in film. Well, that, like I said, that just happened. One thing yeah. led to another that led to another. I'm not even trying. I am, I'll be turning 70 next September. And and my life is more exciting now toward the end of it than I think in any other part of it, because I don't really care. I mean, <laughs> if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, you look great for your age. You don't look so, 70. Pardon? I said, I you look great for your age. You don't look 70. I don't act it either. I'm, I'm the <laughs> same size I was when I was a teenager. I'm 29, 30, 29 inch waist, 32 uh, length pants. I've been that pretty much all my life, except I did go through a period well, I was 100 pounds heavier. Okay. And after I got married, started gaining weight and stuff like that. And then Atkins came out and I thought, uh, I never even bought the Atkins book. I went on the Atkins diet. I gave right. up sugar and bread to start off with. I would go to buffets and eat everything healthy. And then the right. more that people complimented, the more I started losing. And I lost all my weight like real quick. I went from a 53 inch waist down to a 32 inch waist. But 32 right. to 29 took me almost as long as the other way. It's, right. it's something about once you get a certain size, it's right. hard to go past it. But uh, yeah. I'm proud of it. I, actually, I want to do, since I'm, you're on the show, right. I want to throw this out. Any producer, I want to do a May-December romance because I look great without a shirt. <laughs> I got abs, and I can get me a young girl. So right. <laughs> think you, I work with, I you work with like, uh, several of them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so that's one of my dreams of like a Hallmark or Lifetime or something. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're talking about how how uh, you know how great you 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 feel now. Um, I'm just seeing your um, Facebook and uh, little dance you did on on your Facebook. Oh, I've been dancing all my life, all my life. In fact, that's how I broke out of my shyness back. Mm -hmm. uh, in the i think it was 70s or so they started having the male stripper contest right and i've all i've on the dance floor i'm comfortable i can ask any girl out to dance with me because i know what i'm doing and it's fun but right. away from that i was very very shy so i entered one of those male strip contests and i won and i thought well right. if i can strip down to speedos and dance in front of everybody then right. i i've got confidence and if right. i hadn't have done that i probably would not have asked my wife out or yeah, we got married because she is so beautiful and I wouldn't have confidence to do it. And that gave me my confidence. And a lot of times I tell people, whatever your fear is, it's not so bad. Just do it. It's, it's, uh, it, it will change your life because it's, right. it's not fear anymore. So, 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 you know, being somebody who is that shy, um, and what, what kind of led you to, to do that dance to, kind of get out of your shyness? Because I didn't like it. I didn't like being shy. I didn't like right. being, 20 years old and being shy so i just thought i'm gonna get over this and i did that and then uh and then when i got heavy i decided i don't like being heavy i want to be thin again so i got thin again uh i you know anything I, I take a look at myself every now and then say what is it that i can change that i don't like about myself because you can change it all your whole life is choices that you make so uh I, i'll just make that choice i, I don't want that anymore so. Right. That's, that's great advice, too. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's what we tell people, you know, um, the only thing that stops you from doing the things you want to do is you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? 
Because so it's, like, it's like uh, eating a dinosaur. It just takes one little bite at a time, and eventually you've got the whole thing gone. Right. So just take subtle, like when I started uh, doing Atkins, then right. I started walking, and then I started going to the gym, and then I started uh, just just doing everything. Like I said, the more compliments I got, the more I started to get better and better and better. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, it, uh, and, you know, I was that way too. I was uh, um, probably about, I want to say, two two years ago. Uh-huh. Uh, I was pushing like 310 pounds, and Whoa. I did the same thing. So I, I went and uh, started walking. Um, I'm down to 230 right now, but yeah. yeah, but I was at I was pushing about 210. I was wearing like 3XL. So yeah, I went from the same thing 50 about 53, 55 uh-huh. inches. So down to a 32. So now I'm yeah. trying to get down to where you're at, like 29. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm going to try to talk about Rachel Roberts. She's got that new uh, machine that she's uh, doing on Coffee Talk where you put bands on your arms and bands on your legs and you don't have to right. go to the gym anymore. Actually, quick, because I'm going to get one of those machines because <laughs> – I could, I'll sleep in it if I have to, you know, <laughs> wake up with muscle, you know, because uh, even though I'm thin, I mean, I've got a little bit of an arm, but I, I want more. So uh, why not? So because you, as you age, you start losing it and I want to be ahead of the game. I've right. got an uncle that's 89 and you wouldn't believe how good looking he is at 89. And oh, he's wow. still active. He still works. He's got tons of girlfriends. He's, he's mm-hmm. kind of a, uh, one of my idols as far as to, to for longevity. And then I had a great, great grandfather who lived 103. Oh, wow. And uh, I actually met him when I was little. He had all his hair, no teeth, but that was pretty good, <laughs> you know. Right, so, for 100 years old, I mean. Yeah, 103, yeah. Yeah, actually. 103, yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah. um, so let me ask you, um, if somebody was looking for advice, um, you know, you're talking, you know, about, you know, making these changes. Um, and, and like you, you're, you're, you know, um, saying that you're living the best part of your life now than you did in your younger years. Yeah. You know, what, what kind of advice would you give somebody um, who's, who's uh, trying to find their passion and their purpose? Uh, I give you two advice. The only person that makes you happy is yourself. Don't rely on anybody else but yourself. You're the one making the decisions. You're the one that's guiding your life. So right. that's number one. Two is make subtle changes. Don't set your goal to be 300 pounds and then you're going to be down to 200 right away. Right. Do 10 pound increments. Achieve that goal, then set another one, then set another one. One little trick that I do is I go to I go out dancing as you see on my Facebook all the time and I go to parties. In fact, I got one after this interview. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I'll do is I'll tell myself I want to look like a certain way or weigh a certain thing or I want to buy a certain outfit to wear to that party, and I'll set that little go. I mean, I can achieve that because yeah. I, it's not that hard and it's not you know do it by that far away. So, but eventually you'll get there. So. Well, that's great advice. Yeah. Like the movie things, I, 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 like I said, I have that lifetime dream of the May-December romance. I've got these other things coming on. So once I get something big, then it's easy to ask for what you want later. And you've right. got to dream it to, to make it happen. Without any right. dream, nobody's going to come knocking on your door and giving you that opportunity. And you've got to put yourself in the place where it's going to happen. I have a lot of uh, single women friends. And they're always talking about can't meet guys. Well, don't go out with your girlfriends and hang out with them. You need to go where guys are, you know, if you want to meet a guy. He's not going to come to the door and say, hey, I want to marry you. Or do you want to go out? That's not going to happen. You've got to be in the situation where they are. Right. Exactly. And vice versa. If you're a guy, you need to be where the girls are. So. (laughs) Exactly. So, uh, well, cool, man. So, um. Now we talked about. Uh, uh, you said you've done. You've already done a couple. I mean, what? What? Uh, you, can you tell us some of the, uh, something about the movies you've done so far? Well, the Holiday Farmhouse with T.J. Case, the producer. I'm a ghost in the movie, okay. and uh, 
one of my favorite scenes, it's not really done by me, but one of my fellow actors, right. she tells the ghost, uh, she points out, she says, I don't like you. And I just, and at the preview party we had, I came up to her and I said, I don't like you. <laughs> you know, right? Because I just thought that was, I just love that part in the movie. You know, it's like, where's the money? Show me the money or something. You got that one great line in the movie that everybody right. will remember. And I think that's going to be in this movie. So, but right. I didn't get to say it. She did. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And, and then you got uh, the one that, that we're, we're going to keep on the wraps right now, but uh, that you got coming up that uh, uh, possibly was a pretty pretty big star. If we said the name of that person, they would know it. Yeah, I told you. I didn't tell. I just gave you the initials. So yeah. uh, I don't, you know, a lot of times they don't want things to be known until it's right. announced. But I just know that my producer called me on Thursday or on, and texted me and said, a producer wants you for a TV series. And right. I waited to Monday and she told me more and told me the, who the star was. And right. now I'm waiting for more information after that. So uh, as far as I know, it's a done deal. So cool. So when, when that, uh, and I'll do know. whatever they ask. Me. Right. I you said, know. I'll do whatever they ask me to do. Right. And the person you're talking to has the pull to get you into one of those lifetime movies too. Oh, yeah, anything, <laughs> major movie or what? So right. So, uh, so I, I but just like my father, just just like my father here in Nashville, there are a lot, a lot of talented singers and songwriters right. and things like that. You can throw a stone. You probably your neighbor is one when right. you live here in Nashville. But you've got to get in the circle. You've got to have the nowadays. You've got to have the look. You've got to have the talent. You've got to have the connections. You've got to have it all to make it happen. And yeah. it's like, uh, you, you, and you don't offend anybody. You don't blackball anybody. I, when right. I was an interior designer, there was one famous uh, lady that I was going to do her house. She had right. three famous hits in a row. Mm. And my wife and I went over to do the house. And her producer was the guy who made her famous that right. she was with. And uh they said, well, we're going to go on a tour. When we come back, we'll let you do the whole house. Right. And they never did go on tour. But it was, I told my wife, I said, I could tell by the way he looked at you, he's a cheater. And I think he cheated on her, and they split. He made her. He broke her. I never heard another song out of her. And she wow. had three great big hits right in a row. She would have been a big star. But it, it just didn't happen because he blackballed her, I guess. So. So you just don't want to do that. And I, and I know my father, he knew everybody who was everybody. And that's right. probably because of his position. So, Right. And you, know, yeah. and you, you know, being an uh, interior designer and being out where you're at, uh, have you ever thought about doing like a, um, a YouTube show uh, of you doing uh, somebody's house? Well, actually, that's a funny story, too. Uh, Linda Edgen, the women in film and TV here in Nashville, she's in charge of it. Back right. before HGV came popular, she right. came to my house, which is still the house I live in, and she had this couple, and I was young, I wasn't even thinking TV then, and right. they wanted to start a new TV show with me as the star on it, and it would have been the first interior design TV show ever to air. Mm -hmm. And years passed, and that was my dream at one point, but it just didn't happen. And uh, I tried to make it happen, but it didn't happen. And I ran into her and I said, how did we meet? I completely forgot because it's been like 30 years since we met. She right. said, well, I brought that couple to your house and you were going to get a TV show. I said, well, what happened? He had a car accident and got killed. Oh, and wow. I never pursued it because it just wasn't my dream. So yeah. I, I didn't even ask. I just knew they came to the house. She said something. I waited for, word, for it to happen and it just never happened. But I never asked why until 30 years later and found out why. But I would have been in the right spot at the right time right? if that had to happen. And then back in the 80s, one of the biggest mistakes I ever made, I got a little bit of inheritance from my parents and I wanted to go to Atlanta. And if I had gone to Atlanta, I probably would have been on HTV because being an interior designer and speaking in Atlanta, I know uh, 
all the big stars. I mean, all the interior design stars I pretty much know because I met them through market. So, right. And I would have been, in, again, in the right spot at the right time, but my wife had knee surgery and her mother was living next to us and I asked her where she wanted to live and, and she didn't want to live in Atlanta. And I thought, right. and in hindsight, it's only four hours away. I could just as easy came up and saw her mother as I do going down to Atlanta. Right. So, but but just, maybe I wouldn't have been a star by now if if, <laughs> if I left to Atlanta because Nashville's growing now. Yeah. For a long, long time, it, it was, I think, at a standstill. Now, every day, there's a new building and people building everywhere around town. Right. And all those Hollywood people are coming here. So. Right. Is it something you still would consider doing? What? Uh, doing an, an interior design show. Uh, if an opportunity came, I, yeah, I would do it because to me, it's like breathing. I, mm -hmm. I wrote a book called What Were You Thinking? Recognizing Co Co uh, Mistakes That Everybody Makes. Right. If, you, if you're in my profession, Albert Hadley is the father of interior design. He was the first male interior designer way back in the 30s or 40s. Right. And uh, I, get, I knew him and I gave him my book and he went back to New York. And he read it on the plane and he said, your book should be taught in every school in the nation. Oh, wow. Said, it's an awesome book. And he was kind enough to send me slides of all some house past projects that he had did, done right. and uh, wrote me a handwritten note, which I need to get framed because I went to the antique and garden shows. One little sketch done by him is going for like $3,000. Wow. And I've got a handwritten letter and, a personalized letter and all these photographs that he gave me. So wow. I need to get it framed. Good thing you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's good. It's cool. And, and you said you, that's your house behind you, right? Yeah, this is part of my living room, not all of it. Yeah, so I, I mean, just looking at what you have right there, I mean, I can tell that, uh, that you did you design you designed your own house, I'm sure, right? Well, no, the house is just a, a, a little house. The inside, everything, and in, in it's it's what I bought ever since I was a kid. No. Uh, I, I have my bars around the corner, and there's a Copeland Biss dog that when I was 16, I paid $150 at an antique store in Franklin for. Mm. I saw it at the Antique and Garden Show probably about probably seven years ago and it was twenty five hundred dollars oh wow so and that was five years ago it's probably up higher than that but i remembered i paid 150 for it i've got things in the house that uh i paid hundreds that are thousands and i got things i think thousands that are worth five well, digits now so well i'm uh, saying that like from what i can see right now from what's behind you yeah your house looks awesome you know what i mean yeah so yeah. that's what i was saying if you you know um you know I could see you actually doing like a show, like a, an interior design show. Uh, oh yeah, you know, uh, it just seems like that would be something that would that would fit your personality and what you do and what you do. Oh uh, yeah, I, I have to. Do, I did talks in uh, Las Vegas and Atlanta and Market uh, on interior design. So to me, there's not a question anybody could ever ask me that I would not be stunned at answering in interior design because. All my life, all my friends are interior designers. We used to go to market and we talk interior design. Four hours there, four hours back, all the right. time. You know, just it's just breathing to us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool, man. So, um, you know, I'm excited about this uh, this new project that you, you know, hopefully that you know uh, that uh, comes through. And if it does, we gotta get you back on the show so you can tell us about the. I'll, I'll be That's telling the world. I've, I've already called up some of my friends and told them a right. little bit at a time. And I'm like, uh, you don't know how big this is. This is so big. It's like, it's going to change my life. And one of the funny things, I've got another inner podcast to do on Monday with uh, mm -hmm. Patricia with Natural Ladies and Film. It's called The mm -hmm. Aha Moment. And right. he reads cards. And I went to a, an event there and she read my card probably no longer than a month ago right. and she predicted what's happening to me now oh, wow. and it's like uh she said her mother did it and she did it and i'm like my god how could you have known and, and gave me a time period she said it's going to happen within three months of this card reading and oh, it wow. happened within a month and a half of the card reading it may happen three months by the time it actually you know right. start production 
So that would be great. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, uh, when that happens, we definitely want to have you back on the show so you can uh, tell us what the project is, you know, what the show yeah. is, um, and then, you know, what you'll be doing. And, and uh, um, you know, and I, I wish you the best of luck with that. It sounds like it's going to be uh, a lot of fun, especially, you know, knowing who's, who's involved in that, too. So. And then the movie that I'm coming to Hollywood for, it's called Who's Going to Take Care of Me? Right. That's got, uh, let's see, it, it's got so many stars in it. Paul Howard, Paul, let's see, Paul, God, you get old, you can't remember names. I, I have such a hard time, but he, Paul Williams, you know who Paul Williams is? Oh, okay. He's, he's going to be in the movie, and okay. uh, there's some uh, daughters and granddaughters of other famous people that are going to be in the movie. He's going to take care of me. I think from what I understand, there's like 150 actors in this movie. Oh, wow. But my scene is going to be the emergency room doctor with the main character where I guess I tell her her mother's, you know, condition. So, right. And I told my wife, I said, well, it's probably just serious because the doctor didn't really show any emotion. They just tell right. you the news and that's it. So it should be right. easy. So, so I'm looking forward to that. So, and then uh, the next step is we got to get you on the, uh, um, I want those lifetime movies. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. I mean, I like what I've got, but I want one of right. those for some reason. You know, when you uh, reach my age, I would just like to have some kind of legacy that my kids and grandkids and can right. can see and say, that's my father. I mean, it's kind of like the lady is, it did the one commercial and said, where's the beef? You know, right. she just became famous on that one little line in that commercial. Or, right. Uh, lady on the Titanic that, you know, at the end that has the diamond and throws it in the ocean. You know, I would love to have just one little major scene in, in something that's a classic that you see all the time. Right. You know, so, and just kind of stay alive on film. <laughs> <laughs> Be internalized on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, cool, man. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show, man. That was a, uh... You know, a blast to, to get to know you. I know you got a party to go to tonight, and uh, so oh, I really yeah, wait on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time out and and uh, you know being on the show and uh, getting to know you. Uh, and I, I'm excited about you know uh, having you back so you can tell us about you know uh, you know how things went with the, uh, the the new project. So yeah, yeah. Are you going to have Rachel on your show? Yeah, Rachel, Rachel, we've had Rachel. We had Rachel um, um, last week, and uh, we had uh, Natasha. Uh, oh, Rudy. okay, okay. Yeah, well, so maybe both, you have uh, both on. <laughs> yeah, we both. They both have been on the show both uh, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so, I love um, all her little voices and stuff like. That. Actually, the way I got uh, movies and review and more, I was at the Nashville Women in Film, and right? I got there early because I don't like to be late. And Rachel was. Uh, in the lobby and she was about to do her coffee talk i didn't even know about the coffee talk so mm -hmm. i just walk over and we start a conversation and right. talk and she said would you want to be on my podcast and i said sure so i got on the podcast it got a lot of reviews and now i'm on movies reviewing more again it wasn't planned out i was just at the right place at the right time so right. just that's just, actually that's actually why i met her is through her coffee talk uh yeah yeah. yeah, and then she told me about the movie review more uh, broadcast, right. um, yeah. and that's how I met um, Natasha. It's through, right. Yeah, Natasha. So Robert, yeah. we're gonna have Brian come on, <laughs> and me. <laughs> so, yeah. So well, you gotta uh, have Brian on now. He's he's the star of the show. The head yeah, that's what I would have, I'm, that's, he's the next man I gotta reach out to and uh, and get him on the show. He, he's got some interesting stories. He actually met um, Sidney Portier before he died oh, and interviewed wow. him. I mean, he's he, uh, not too long ago, we had William Schaffner on the show. Okay. Uh, that was good. I mean, we've got some major big hitters. Uh, I got to interview D.D. D. Wallace, that was uh, Jody uh, Barrymore's mother in E.T. Right. And uh, so it, it's, it's exciting. You don't know who you're going to meet. Every week, Tuesday night, seven o'clock Central Time. <laughs> cool, yeah, and we're, I'm going to do that. I'm put the post, and and uh, that's going to uh, say too. Is is there any social media 
um, sites that you have that um, if somebody wanted to follow you? I have you. just Howard Wiggins Facebook. That's all that keeps me going all day long. And I, I actually have three Howard Wiggins interior design, which I really don't do much on it anymore, but, but I don't want to give it up. And then I have Howard Wiggins actor, which I really should have been doing that one. But just the plain Howard Wiggins where I'm changing my picture all the time. You can see my dance. You can see my house. You can see my jobs I've done. Everything I do in life is on that one. Because every day I post many pictures. Right. So just follow me on that. And so that's what I'll do. I'll put the uh, link to that in the comments below. And uh, and that way people can uh, um, follow you and, and see what all you're working on. Great. Glad to do. Glad cool. to be on your show. So, all right, man. Well, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you so much for taking your time out and, and uh, um, you know, being on the show. It was a blast getting to know you, man. Thank you. Peace so and love to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so we got we to do this again. So, All right. Okay. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, remember, you're uniquely designed with a purpose. And always keep moving forward. Peace. <laughs>